Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the all new 2023 Dodge Hornet. Before we get into the video though, as always, if you're gonna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. So let's talk about the new Dodge Hornet, which is actually going to share a platform with the Alfa Romeo Tonale that I should be able to review in the next couple of months. Now it's not gonna share just a platform, it's gonna share pretty much everything. There have been several test mules spotted out in the world uh, with the Tonale and with the Hornet where basically a Dodge Hornet will have the wheels from the Tonale and the headlights or taillights from a Tonale or the Tonale will have headlights or taillights or wheels from a Hornet. And so they're just basically swapping parts from vehicle to vehicle to confuse people, right? Because they don't like people taking spy photos, frankly, uh, but also, basically to show everyone that, hey, these vehicles are essentially the same thing. So proportions, all that kind of stuff is going to be the same. But it looks like Dodge is inevitably going to do quite a bit to change the Hornet stylistically so that it looks like its own unique vehicle and so that it doesn't have like, you know, the Alfa Romeo-ness to it from a stylistic perspective, if that makes sense. So it will ultimately, again, be on the same platform as the Tonale, but it, it will look like a Dodge on the outside and frankly on the inside as well. And so it will have, you know, similar material use and style as what you see in like a Charger, Challenger, Durango, so on and so forth. And so expect lots of cars with black interiors and red stitching. That's kind of like the thing that Dodge seems to do with their interiors or actually uh, what has been a little bit more common lately is like the uh, red seats, which is definitely pretty interesting. Now you guys are probably interested in the powertrain with the new Hornet. Sadly, it's not going to have an exciting powertrain like a V8 or, you know, a turbocharged inline six. It is going to have a two liter turbocharged four cylinder because ultimately it's not a huge SUV, right? It's a little itty bitty crossover. And so it doesn't need a monstrous powertrain, even though it would be cool if it had a monstrous powertrain. And that turbocharged two liter four cylinder is most likely gonna be paired to a nine speed automatic transmission because that's what the Tonali has. Now the Tonali with that powertrain produces 256 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Uh, and it is all wheel drive. The Hornet most likely will also be all wheel drive. There has been some talks of it potentially having a front wheel drive variant, but I feel like that would be pretty offensive to Dodge people because Dodges are either rear wheel drive or they're all wheel drive. They're not front wheel drive. Obviously we had the Journey that was discontinued just a few years ago that was front wheel drive, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. There is potential for that. However, this powertrain is also in the Alfa Romeo Stelvio and in the Stelvio it's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission and not a nine speed automatic, which I definitely prefer the eight speed over the nine speed. If you guys are wondering, just the gear ratios and the shift speeds and everything, it's just it's better transmission overall. Now in the Stelvio it produces 280 horsepower and 306 pound feet of torque. And a lot of people are thinking that that's what the Hornet will produce because again, it's under the Dodge brand, which is all about maximizing horsepower and torque, right? It's all about muscle, it's American muscle. And so I think that it's pretty safe to assume that it'll probably have somewhere between those two numbers or potentially it could exceed both of those numbers, right? Maybe once the engineers at Dodge get a hold of the engine, they just pump up the boost and they're like, we gotta have as much power as we can in this little SUV because it only has a four cylinder at the end of the day. Now, another powertrain that the Tonali is also going to have uh, later in its release is going to be a plug-in hybrid that might also transfer over to the Hornet as well, which I know a lot of people are going to be kind of confused as to why Dodge would even do a hybrid. And it's just kind of the route that they're going just like every other automaker. Dodge is already going to release a fully electric muscle car in the next few years. Uh, the next like Hellcat basically is going to be fully electric. That's what Dodge has essentially said when they redesigned the Challenger and Charger. And so them doing a plug-in hybrid with a small SUV, well, small crossover, whatever you want to call it, makes complete sense. And that's kind of what the market is going towards, right? Is more electrification, more hybrids, and more electric vehicles. Now, let's kind of get into, I guess, my opinions here on the Hornet and whether or not I think that it's going to be uh, successful. And I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but I don't think that the Hornet's going to sell in massive volume numbers like Dodge is hoping uh, for it to do. Um, I think it will expand Dodge's lineup, obviously, right? That's pretty self-explanatory because right now we just have the Charger, the Challenger, and the Durango. There's 
nothing else in the lineup because well they got rid of the journey and they also got rid of the dodge dart a few years ago and so yeah it's a pretty slim lineup at this point so beefing up the lineup with an suv which is what most people purchase in today's market makes complete sense that being said though it is going into a very very competitive market right crossovers in that size category are just like the hottest thing ever right now because fuel prices have been sky high for quite some time now and so a lot of people have been downsizing uh, to SUVs in that size category and even before high fuel prices that's just what most people wanted because in that size category you have enough practical space for you know a family of four which is bigger than most families in the US now, frankly, because most people have like, I think it's like 1.6, 1.7 kids or something like that. And so since most people are not having two kids, they only have one kid, right, at this point, then that means they don't need a huge like suburban sized SUV. They want something that's smaller, that, you know, it's easy to fit in parking spaces, get around town, all that kind of stuff. So the point that I'm trying to make here is they have a lot of competition. And so since they have a lot of competition, they better do a lot with this new crossover to really differentiate it in the segment. And then on top of that, branding, frankly, is going to be an issue because when people think of Dodge at this point, because of what the lineup consists of and because of what's popular within the lineup, they think V8s, they think muscle. They don't think small crossover with turbocharged four cylinder or plug-in hybrid. And so what I think ultimately is going to happen again, this is just my guess based on what the market typically does is people that want to buy a plug-in hybrid are probably going to go to another manufacturer that is kind of more about that in terms of their branding right like volvo for example toyota so on and so forth and then if someone wants you know kind of more of like a muscle crossover well they probably want something bigger than what this hornet is going to be from a size perspective and they probably don't want a turbocharged four-cylinder and so they will sell because ultimately it, you know, what we have been able to surmise from the little like camouflage cars is it's actually going to be a pretty good looking crossover and it's going to have decent power outputs for the segment. And so there definitely will be people that will want to purchase it, but it does kind of have a slight identity crisis. And so that is going to negatively impact uh, the Hornet from a sales perspective. And so, Ultimately, I don't think this is really going, I, I mean, Dodge will sell some, but I don't think this is really going to push things forward for them. I think that what Dodge could do, right, that might not make logical sense, but what they could do that would really push uh, some sales is some sort of body on frame SUV, right, the Ram Charger that everyone's been talking about, and I need to make an update video on this, um, but something like that that is just big and brawny because that's what people think of when they think of Dodge at this point. But let me know what you guys think about this new Alfa Romeo Tonale, ha, ha get it, Dodge Hornet. Um, and if this is something that you'd be interested in or if you think that Dodge is wasting their time that they should allocate time and resources to building out uh, something else, you know, like I said, Ram Charger or something like that. Anyways, I'll see you.